Okay, here's my prediction for Captivate 2019. I know that some of you are watching this video right when Captivate 2019 was released. Some of you might be watching it six months after, etc. But we'll just see how this, uh, if this comes to fruition or not. My prediction is that this feature that I'm going to talk about today is going to be the feature that is the key feature of this particular release. And what we're talking about today is interactive video. So let me show you what I've learned so far. So there's an interactive video icon right on the toolbar. And uh, I've already set up my project to include some knowledge check slides and what are called overlay slides. And then I have a blank slide at the beginning of my project where my video is going to reside. So let's uh, insert some interactive video or at this point actually just video. And you can do it one of two ways. You can either select a video that's already on your hard drive somewhere, or you can select a YouTube video. Perhaps it's a video you've already uploaded. The advantage of using YouTube is that the file size won't impact, or the video size won't impact the size of your e-learning project. The other advantage, of course, is that you can select a start and end time for that video, especially important if you're just using a small segment of a YouTube video. But I already have a YouTube video up, so I'm just gonna paste that YouTube video into the URL here and click on OK. So the slide length has been extended by the length of the video. And of course I come in with a video that's much smaller than expected. So I'm gonna to go to my properties panel and I'm going to do a couple things. First of all, I'm going to move this to the left and to the top. I happen to know that this slide is 720 pixels tall. So I'm just going to type that in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the alignment controls in my alignment toolbar, which you can open up just by clicking on the window drop down and selecting a line and making sure that that is centered on my page. The other thing you might want to do is with this particular slide, you might want to change the background to be a more neutral color like black. Uh, in this case here, I'll just go custom and it's already selected black for me. So that works out well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of uh, key points along the timeline of my video or along the timeline of this particular slide. So let's hit play and just uh, preview a little bit of this. So at this point, I want to bring an overlay slide in to provide some information that actually accentuates that point about it being high quality. So you'll notice that when I pause the playback on my timeline, there are two little icons uh, attached to my playhead. And if I wish to insert an overlay slide, I use the bottom diamond shaped icon. And that shows me all the available slides that can be used as an overlay slide. In this case, here's the one about DSLR. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to insert that at this point. Now you'll notice a couple things that happen. Number one, the slide itself decreases in size slightly and it has this little icon next to it. And that just denotes that this is an overlay slide associated with the video on the first slide. And of course it changes position so that it's right next to that video. So I can continue to play this project and I'll put in the remaining overlay slides for each of the different types of cameras that I talk about. Okay, so now I'm going to insert that overlay slide and there's the example. And as again, again, it 
bumps up and re reduces in size and has the icon associated with overlay slides. We'll continue. So I think right about there is where I want to insert the overlay slide for that. So let's test your knowledge on what I've just explained to you. I'm going to move it back just a tad bit. Uh, for the remainder of this video, there will be a couple of knowledge check questions, and we'll see how you did. Okay, so now the next overlay I'm going to insert is actually a knowledge check question. So we'll go ahead and put that in. And then immediately after it, maybe just a couple milliseconds, I'll insert the next one. And then the final one. Now, of course, I want to make sure that these knowledge checks are set up correctly. So what's going to happen if I fail to get the knowledge check correct? Well, maybe I want them to view the video once more. So let's go back to the beginning and we'll pick a point on the video. I'm not going to subject the viewer to my, my title slides here, my title card, but just at the black point, just before I start speaking there, I'm going to insert what's called a bookmark, and that's the top of these two types of icons. So let's click that, and we'll just call this beginning. Or I'll just say begin. There we go. So now let's take a look at our knowledge checks here. There are a bunch of different uh, questions. They're all similar to one another. And if I go to the quiz properties panel, I've selected all three at the same time, and on the last attempt for each of these, I'm going to jump to bookmark and expect the users to watch the video again if they fail to answer the questions correctly uh, each time. And of course, I'm also going to give them two attempts, and of course, if they are successful, I'll just continue playing. So I think that's pretty much set up good to go here. Let's do a preview of this project and see how it works. So we're going to go preview. Now your instinct might be to use the regular project, but unfortunately, because there are certain types of interactions in this, specifically the interactive video and use of YouTube videos, uh, you won't be able to preview it this way. So we're going to hit cancel here and we'll go preview and choose HTML5 in browser. Alternatively, you could press F11. Uh, to get the same type of preview. So before we proceed to the next type, we now have the overlay, which has got a lovely PNG file, a transparent image of a DSLR and some text emphasizing that the main advantage, of course, is the quality. I can hit continue. So again, the main advantage of a compact digital is its size. So here we have uh, the main advantage of a smartphone as a camera is that it's always with you. So here's our first knowledge check question. Really nice how it fades out the, the video, but not entirely. There's a, an image of the video uh, frozen in the background, slightly out of focus. Uh, so what's the main advantage of using your smartphone as a camera? You can check that off as it's with you most of the time. Correct. What's the main advantage of a DSLR? Quality of picture. 
And let's get this last one wrong because while normally it would continue playing the video where I congratulate you, I want to see um, what happens when we get it wrong. So what's the main advantage of a compact digital camera? We'll say quality of pictures, which is incorrect. Try again. And of course that takes you back to the beginning of the video and then of course you can learn what you should have learned the first time and make another attempt at those questions before you continue with the rest of your project. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.